What's up guys, welcome to the Factory Financial. My name is JD Nimmels and on this channel we talk about personal finances and my favorite real estate and stock market. In today's uh, video I want to talk to you about one theory and one principle that I use when I when it comes to investing. That is just me, this is not a personal advice or financial advice to you, this is what I do and this is the way I think and I want to share with the people, tell me what you think about my theory. Alright, the theory is called black sheep investing right so what is the black sheep investing um let me show you actually an example what do i mean by black sheep investing okay okay so here's my factor financial youtube channel hit that subscribe button do me a favor and let's grow together let's grow our money together all right so let me show you something right here this is the globe and mail this is where I hold my portfolio, right? I forgot about this and I was recently looking at it. I was like, holy crap, look at this, right? So this portfolio was made in March, I do believe March, 2020. So this is when Rona happened, when everybody was freaking out, when everybody was selling, the market dropped, like what was it, 30 something percent and dropped. So it was crazy, right? So everybody was selling. So this is where the black sheep come in, comes in, right? So don't be like everybody else, be different, right? So everybody was dumping, everybody's talking about banks, how they're gonna collapse, everybody's talking about real estate, like how those huge REITs, how they're gonna collect all the rents, all the money, right? So, oh, they're gonna go under the water. So there was a lot of panic in the market, right? So what I did, like, I looked at it, for example, okay, my favorite one was like, I looked at a Fairfax Financial, right? I look at their balance, I look at how much cash on hand they had at a time. And I looked at them like, they can cover twice with the cash they have like they can cover twice the older debts and everything i'm like why would they go underwater like i don't understand same thing for a toronto dominion bank td bank or or a plaza retail or what was it smart centers that was a that was another one they have like canadian tire uh, as a as a clients they have walmarts they have like these huge players they're not gonna go on there they were working everything was fine later on as we can see two years later everything is super fine same like with the bank of montreal and if you look at all this portfolio i'm only losing money or i did like, i sold out of this i have to i have to make the disclaimer i sold out because i bought a house right so look at this 46 percent 46 percent even with the recent downturn okay in recent downturn still 46 percent and the market's been down for the last three four days five days it's been doing, going down everybody's talking about the interest rates going up so the market's down and look at this bank of montreal 87 percent return i only had one share but 87 percent and everybody was going crazy so when i say a black sheep at the time that was the black sheep for me because it looked at the I look at a company's structure. I looked at what is the company. So there's a five banks in Canada. There's a Scotiabank, TD, Montreal, RBC, uh, CIBC, right? So there's five of them. It's like a cartel here in Canada, right? They make a lot of money. So something would have to go really, really bad in order for those banks to suffer, to go down. Like the whole country would have to go down with them. So I looked at it and I'm looking at their, their statements and everything like the balance sheet. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. So that's why I was buying. I was buying banks and I was buying real estate, the big players, right? So that was those were my black sheep because everybody was going towards the right and I was going towards the left. So you want to be that one outlier. So you want to buy quality companies. You don't want to buy some crap garbage, right? You want to buy quality companies. Each of those companies, like Bank of Montreal, uh, Enbridge, Fairfax, Manulife, uh, Plaza Retail, the um, Smart Center Real Estates, the TDs, those are all quality Canadian companies. They didn't go under, as you can see, <laughs> two years later on, they're thriving, they're like making so much money. And they will continue doing that. So uh, I understand that this is two years late, right? So, but let's look at the current example, okay? Let's look at one thing that is right now everybody's hating on, okay? So if you look right here, Netflix, right? Netflix has been hurting. Look at that. Look, look at that drop. Like, look at that drop. They went six ninety. Right now, they're three hundred and eighty dollars, which is insane. And if we look here, just before this is March twenty twenty, February. Okay, let's do February first. Look, they're three hundred and sixty nine dollars per share. They're right now. 
$384. So this is close to being a pre-pandemic price. And everybody's hating on the Netflix right now, everybody's dumping it, everybody's talking about the interest rates. So this company for me right here is the black sheep company right now. So if I was investing money, if I had a free cash, I would definitely be buying a lot, a lot of Netflix. I'm not gonna go into deep dive into the Netflix, the company and their financials and everything. Uh, there's plenty of people doing that uh, on pretty much daily basis, right? So where I'm gonna go is two things. First of all, Bill Aikman, he just bought a crap load of Netflix and that, man, that guy doesn't lose money. And second of all, let me ask you a question, okay? So from Disney Plus, from Hulu's, from uh, HBO's, from every single one of those companies, like Crave, whatever, here in Canada, like from all those companies, if you had to choose one, streaming companies, if you had to choose only one, what would it be? And I recently did a poll and I was asking questions around most of the people would keep Netflix. So I understand there's a price up, it's going up again, this and that and other. But uh, Netflix is a company, the value they provide, yes, they throw a lot of, a lot of episodes, a lot of, lot of content, they throw it out. But they have some hits and lately they didn't, especially the first quarter right now, they're, they're struggling, right? But they said that, right? So there's gonna be a little bit of adjustment from two year period when they were uh, gobbling a lot of that future subscription base. But right now they're a little bit suffering for it. How much? 0.1% they missed the target or 0.01%? I forgot what it was. It was just something so small. And I don't understand why everybody was, uh, why everybody still is freaking out about that. I still think it's a quality company. They still have a good, a good management. Uh, they're breaking out slowly, but they're gonna be growing again. So the new content's coming out. If you're if you're movie buff like I am, like if you love movies and TV shows, they're gonna have more coming out. So it's been a little bit slow now, but that's not the reason to sell from six ninety to three hundred and eighty dollars. Like I think that people are over exaggerating the problem here. Maybe their content was a little bit edgy, some of it was risky, but they stuck by their creators. If you look at Dave Chappelle, like everybody was like, cancel Dave, cancel Dave, but they still have it over there. Like, so they stick up for their creators, which is awesome. Like you wanna see companies sticking out, like maybe you don't agree with everything. I don't agree with everything he said, but it is what it is, right? Democ democracy, we're living in a free society. So. Right now, if I had a cash, I would be buying this company. And watch, mark my words, two, three, four years from now, companies go up and down. But if you buy for a long term, if you're buying for like eight, 10 years, you're gonna be laughing at this opportunity. This is opportunity right now. Okay, so I just covered my black sheep investing theory, uh, where you buy a quality companies that everybody's hating and you stick with them, you buy and wait for a tide to, tide to turn, which always does. Well, if you're buying a quality, it does. Well, if you buy some iffy ones, then you get what you get. But if you buy a quality companies, when everybody's hating on them, remember at Tim Hortons, when they were complaining about $15 an hour minimum wage, but everybody was dumping the shares, everybody hated on Tim Hortons, they had a bad press, nobody wanted it. If you bought Timmy's back then, today you'd be profiting nicely generous profit right but people forget things turn around and go so that are the second thing i want to talk about is the 60 40 principle that i use the 60 40 principle is where 60 percent of my investment money goes right away to stock market so i buy shares with 60 percent 40 percent i left on the side as a dry powder as um wartime chess like whenever something happens like it did in february march 2020 when market went down 30 percent that's when i would spend all the or i wouldn't spend all the money well i would spend chunks right so i would drop a little chunks here and there just trying to see if the market is still going down or is it up like you don't want to spend right away but if it's a good opportunity for a quality company then spend your money Inve uh, I shouldn't say spend, I should say invest your money. Okay, so 60-40 and another 
reason why I do the 60-40 split is like downturn right now. Everybody's talking about, oh, recession 2023, this and that, um, stock market's tanking, blah, 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 blah. So whatever happens, if you have that 40% on the side, you get laid off, okay, you can pay the bills. You need to switch jobs, you need three, four months to get you through, you got the cash. So 60-40 is where I like it. Maybe you're going to go 70-30. Maybe you're gonna 80 20. I don't know what you're comfortable. I don't know how much money you make. So that's gonna depend on you. But for my liking, for my safety, with everything that I have, with the real estate and all that, like 60 40 makes most sense to me. So 60% direct investments, because even when the, when the economy goes down, even when the stock market goes down, you still wanna be investing. Because if you're investing constantly, even through the ups and downs, ups and downs, like that medium in, in let's say in 10 years when you draw the line in a medium you're gonna be making money you're buying ups you're buying downs as long as you're buying constantly 20 years from now when you retire when you or 15 years from now when you retire whatever the date is you're gonna look at that and be like that was a good choice <laughs> i made a good call all right so if you like my video please do me a favor please hit that subscribe button let me know whatever you think whatever i do you think i get something wrong let me know i want to know that uh, definitely and i'll see you next video bye <music>